Hello and welcome to part three of my genetic algorithms video series. Um, I'm almost ready to like dive in and actually start looking at all the pieces of the code and how they implement the actual genetic algorithm itself. But what I want to do in this example, you can see the genetic algorithm just ran and it arrived at the phrase to be or not to be. What I want to um, do is just kind of run this example a bunch of times while tweaking various parameters of the system um, um, and look at kind of what all the pieces here of the example running are. So here's the algorithm. I have it for reference that we could come back to. And first thing I want to do is just run this example. This is, this is running in the browser. Uh, this example is programmed in P5JS. I will show you at the end of this video. I'll just run the same thing in processing to show you the Java code as well. And you can see in the talking there, in the talking, in my talking, it evolved. This system evolved to be or not to be. That is to just to be or not to be, period. So one thing you can see in this example is that I'm kind of drawing on the right side here all of the various current elements of the population. And you can see those current elements of the population at this point where the program stops where one of them is the exact correct phrase. Um, you can see here what they look like. And if I refresh the page, you can see, you can see the population itself starting to get closer and closer uh, to that correct phrase. And eventually, it's going to stop. And, you, and here's just sort of a selection of those members of the population. You can also see over here, I'm kind of having the program always show you the current element of the population with the highest fitness. And you can see that over here. And you can see this is the current element of the population with the highest fitness. Eventually, that will be 100% fitness to be or not to be. And then I'm also showing you how many generations. So this happened in 514 generations. What's the average fitness? Remember, the fitness function calculates the percentage of characters correct from 0 to 100%. How many characters does the phrase have correct? And you can see the average pop fitness goes up over time. It doesn't get to 100% because when one of the phrases has the correct, uh, the correct one of the elements of the population has the correct phrase, the rest of them still don't have the correct phrase. Um, and then also showing you the total population and the mutation rate. So before I get into the code, I even just want to change a couple variables here and show you a little bit about how the system behaves. So for example, what happens if I take this mutation rate and these, the, the, the maximum population and the mutation rate are simply just variables in the code. There's also a target phrase, right? So I could actually just change this program right now to be unicorn. I've never done this. And run it again, we can see how quickly it only took, with a short phrase, it only took five generations to get unicorn. Come up with your own. I'm going to go back to, to be or not to be. I'm going to take the mutation rate and make it zero. And now I'm going to run this again. Now notice what's going on. It's kind of sort of settled into something. Look, all the members of the population actually have exactly the same sequence of characters. The best phrase is not changing. And the total generation is just going up and up and up and up and up. So this is a scenario where if there is no mutation, there was not enough variation at the start to actually evolve the phrase. right? There was no initial member of the population with an O as the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th character. So this is something you really have to be careful of. This mutation is required. Now, one thing I could do is just say, well, the total population was only 200. So I could make the total population 1,000. And look, we actually got to the best phrase, the target phrase, in 44 generations with no mutation. So with a population of 1,000 elements, there is actually plenty of variation. You know, we can see what happens, by the way. I have no idea if I just have a population of 1. Well, that kind of broke it. Let's give it a population of 2. That broke it also. Uh, 10. Right? You can see, oh, this, I love this. This page is in Norwegian. That's how to use it. Um, so uh, with, with only two members of the population, uh, we got a phrase that's in uh, Norwegian. OK, so um, you can see how this, um, the size of the initial population is quite relevant. Now, let me me let, let's talk about something here that's kind of important little factor also. Let's go back to that population of 1,000. We can see I was able to evolve the correct phrase in 41 generations very quickly. Now let me make the pop a population max of 5,000. 27 generations, even more quickly. Let me give it a little bit of mutation, 1% mutation rate. Uh, it, it took longer that time, but this is sort of randomly. I'm getting it rather, woo, there's a loud noise there. I'm getting it rather quickly. One thing I should mention here is you have to remember this is an artificial problem that I've designed to demonstrate a genetic algorithm. I'm not actually trying to get to be or not to be 
the fastest. Because I could do all sorts of things like, OK, I know what the answer is. So when a, uh, when a member of the population has the correct, uh, the correct character, I could actually just use that correct character and make sure I put that in the next year. There's all sorts of things I could do to actually try to get to the answer more efficiently, like just say print line to be or not to be. But, so, but what we want to do here is just sort of look at how does the ge genetic algorithm behave and perform, um, changing some of these variables. But you, um, I kind of got off track there. and not, I sort of meant to talk about that later, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I could keep ramping up the population max, thinking it's going to be faster and faster. And now I have the a population max of 15,000 characters. And you can see that I was able to get to be or not to be in 30 generations. But look how slow the kind of frame rate, so to speak, of each generation. The program starts to run slower and slower and slower. Like if I were to have 100,000 members of the population, I, I think I might have just crashed I've practically crashed the browser here. Like I might be able, it's running so slow. So there's a trade-off here. Having a large population helps because you have a larger, larger pool to start with in terms of variation. But once your population is so large, the computation can become rather slow that it just takes forever to get there. So even though I might have gotten there in 25 generations, it took much longer than if I just said, 1,000 members of the population, which you can actually crunch through really, really fast, might take more generations, but actually happens faster. So that's another important thing. Um, that's another important thing for me to mention. Another thing that I should mention here is that the mutation rate itself, boy, I haven't started looking at the code yet. The mutation rate itself is also a prime key factor. You know, more mutation you think might help. But what if I say 0.1, like 10% mutation? If the mutation rate is so high that there's mutations happening so often, it's almost akin back to that brute force solution where everything's just random in the first place. For example, at 50%, everything becomes almost completely unrecognizable in the sort of like list of the population. And uh, uh, if I were to make the mutation rate 1, 100%, this is actually complete and total randomness. OK, so thanks for watching this particular video. Uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to peel open, turn, like pull open, whatever. This like I'm going to open a suitcase or pull a curtain, something, and actually look at the code itself, uh, go back to this algorithm. What are the pieces of this algorithm, and where are those pieces in code, and how are the different techniques working to make this algorithm run?